here. Amen. And so uh, without further ado, our sister uh, Damaris Miranda. Good morning, everyone. God bless you on this Palm Sunday. The, um, the title of my reflection today is Blessed are the Brokenhearted, based in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and the Sermon on the Mount. Today in the Christian community, we remember what has come to be known as Palm Sunday. The arrival of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem. It marks the beginning of Holy Week and the many events that took place at that time, culminating in the crucifixion and the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and finally, his resurrection on Easter. But prior to this time of Palm Sunday and Holy Week, there was much that took place in the life of Jesus Christ and his followers. And today, I would like to reflect on an area that has drawn my attention, especially in recent days. First, there is a statement that Jesus made during his teaching in the Sermon of the Mount or the Beatitudes, where he states, blessed are those who mourn or blessed are the brokenhearted, for they will be comforted. And then there is the story of the death of his friend, Lazarus, that many of you are familiar with, found in the book of Luke chapter 11. The Bible tells us that Jesus had been among the people teaching when he received news that his friend was sick. By the time he reached where Lazarus lived, his friend was dead. When Jesus saw the distress of his sister Mary and his friends, the scriptures tell us that he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And then it states very simply in verse 35, Jesus wept. Blessed are the brokenhearted. The son of God, Jesus Christ, was deeply moved in spirit and troubled over the pain, the loss, the suffering of others so moved that he wept. I was speaking with a friend this week and somehow or other, our conversation veered into a discussion of the recent deaths that took place during the school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. I was expressing my hurt and distress over what took place. And suddenly I realized what my friend was saying in what I found to be a cold and matter of fact tone of voice. They repeated, we need our guns. We need our guns. Now, this is a good person. A person who identifies as a follower of Jesus Christ. A person I have cared about and appreciated 
over the years. But I have to say that as I heard those words repeated, even after I mentioned the people who died and the excessive unnecessary firepower of the weapons that were used, I felt sincerely confused and physically chilled by what I was hearing. And yet, I realized that this person was not alone in how they felt or what they believe. Whether Christian or not, many people seem to be exhibiting an increasing lack of ability to mourn over the pain and the suffering of others, to weep and have our hearts broken over the hatred and the violence that is destroying the lives of our children, our families, and our country. Some say that when a person witnesses or experiences too many bad things in their lives, they protect themselves by numbing their feelings and they become unable to respond normally to the suffering and the pain of others. Broken heartedness mourning for others seems to be increasingly the exception in our society rather than the rule. Of course, there is a lot of lip service that takes place, a lot of well-meaning concern by the media and by our leaders and by those that are impacted at the time by the terrible incident that takes place. But not the deep distress in our spirits, not the brokenheartedness that moves us to change. If that were not so, our leaders would be falling over each other working to enact laws that would end access to the weapons that are destroying us. If that were not so, money would be spilling from our coffers to provide the treatments and supports needed by our mentally ill, the housing needed by our hungry, the medical care needed by our sick, and the list goes on and on. It is not that we do not have the means. We do not have the broken hearts. Our hearts are not broken by the things that break God's heart. It requires that something happen to our car, our home, our child, our family, our community, our school, our church, before we act. And even then, change is slow to come, if any. This is not a matter of race or religion, class, gender or sexual orientation. It is a matter of humanity. It is a matter of allowing our humanity to be taken from us. For too long in our Christian communities, many have carried the name of Christ while carrying within us not broken hearts, but hardened hearts. Not hearts that truly mourn and weep 
for the pain and the loss and the suffering of others. But hearts that repeat, we need our guns. We need our guns. When did it happen? When did we let go of the spirit of love, mercy, and compassion given to us by the Christ who gave us everything, even to die on the cross for the sake of his creation? When did we let go of the spirit that taught us greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends? When did we allow our safety, our well being, our interests, our possession to take precedence? over our love for one another. Instead, we settle for protests and vigils and candle lightings and speeches that eventually blow away like dust in the wind until the next killing, the next mass shooting, the next bizarre event that starts the cycle all over again. This is not good enough. We must ask God to break our hardened hearts, to reignite a spirit of brokenness and mourning for the pain and the suffering of others that moves us to action. We must not look away from suffering, but right at it and ask God to help us let go of the fear that makes, on so, makes us hold on so tightly to our lives. As the scriptures teach us, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What will it profit a person if they gain the whole world but lose their soul? I notice often that our political leaders these days will state, our hearts go out to them. But is that truly so? How can our hearts go out to them when in the same breath we deny the change, the action that will bring healing? We must truly examine our hearts, particularly those that call ourselves Christians. We must examine our hearts to see if it is truly the spirit of Christ that leads us or the spirit of fear and hatred and violence. I understand that the issues we face are not simple to resolve. There is true evil in the world, but we must act wisely, but decidedly. There must be change that arises from broken hearts that truly feel the pain and the suffering of others. And the followers of Christ should be in the lead, leading by example, by lives of mercy, compassion, and love. 
and not by lives that are filled by fear and judgment. We need our guns. We need our guns. Should be a mantra that should not exist upon the lips of the brokenhearted, upon the lips of those of us who call ourselves followers of the Christ. So on this Palm Sunday, as we prepare to remember the life, the ministry, the sacrifice, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God grant us broken hearts that will transform our lives, transform our relationships with each other, and transform the society in which we live. May we move beyond lip service. May we truly seek to feel, to understand, to experience the loss, the pain, the suffering of those around us. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen and amen. Thank you uh, for that beautiful message, Mrs. Amherst. And uh, give me a second. Beautiful message, amen? Uh, let us continue to reflect on uh, this message uh, as we go throughout this week and let us continue to reflect on what Jesus did and what Jesus taught us, amen? amen? Let us bow our heads, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending and paving the way for us through Christ Jesus. Thank you for what this day stands for. Yes. Your entry into our hearts and the beginning of Holy Week. The start of a personal journey towards the miracle at the cross and the promise of a better life in you. Amen. Hosanna, blessed is he Amen. who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. We give you praise and honor for your ways and your thoughts are righteous and true. Lord, you are holy and just yes. and your loving kindness endures forever yes teach us, teach us your ways which are far greater than our ways teach us to think like you for your thoughts are far deeper than our thoughts Amen. thank you for giving us the formula to live a better life because you make all things new. Yes. Help us, help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us not to fall prey to the voices of the confused and malicious who surround us on a daily basis. Yes. But help us to press on to hear your whispers of goodness and to seek after you and you alone. 
Through you, O oh God, we are more than conquerors. In the mighty name above all names. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us. Our next service will be on Thursday evening, a Monday Thursday service on uh, this coming uh, Thursday evening at 7 p.m., same link. Uh, this message, as well as other messages, can be found on our YouTube channel, Rev. Dr. Marcos Miranda. Our website is actioninchrist.com, and I can be reached, uh, or all of us can be reached uh, at actioninchrist.gmail.com. Amen. With that Amen. said, uh, thank you. God bless you. Enjoy this beautiful day. And please, please, please show each other the sign of peace.